Hello everyone. I hope you're having a great week. Recently, I welcomed self-taught programmer and tech founder Mike Chen onto the Scrimba live stream, and he shared a goldmine of information for newbie developers. We talked about a ton of topics, including how to negotiate a great salary, what makes a great junior, and interview prep. Now, we've condensed those down into eight of our top tips from Mike for you to enjoy. Let's get into it. Would you recommend someone who's starting out to start with a big tech company or with a startup? I would say startup just because I think it's going to be a lot easier for you to get a job there. Big tech companies have like these really robust like hiring pipelines. They have internships that are essentially a recruiting tool. Like they they go to you know colleges and find people with CS degrees and they give them internships. And uh, it's like a very expensive way of like filling their pipeline with talented people that they're going to be able to hire right out of school. It's going to be really hard to go up against that like talent pipeline. I've actually yet to hear of like any self-taught developers who are able to land their first job at a fan company. For ease of, of breaking in, startups are just going to be much more likely to give you a first chance. This leads me on nicely to how to sell being self-taught to an employer, because there are definitely benefits to being self-taught. You just need to frame them correctly in the interview. You have to frame it throughout your entire process. On your resume, it needs to be a, like framed a certain way. If you write a cover letter, which I think you should, it'll like enormously increase your chances over like a the one click apply on LinkedIn. You have to spell it out. You have to spell out the connection between your experience as like, you know, retail or like a journalist or like a teacher. You have to spell it out in your, your resume. Like don't expect that people to connect the dots and be like, oh, this person, you know, taught uh, third grade. So they must be really good at like teaching people how to write code or like, you know, stuff like that. So the more you can connect that and the more that you can like show evidence that you, you've you already started doing this. So if you are a teacher, like start writing blog posts and like, point to that as like, oh, I've transferred my teaching ability to my blog posts about technical topics. If you can showcase that, that will earn you a lot of points. What advice would you give to someone who's wanting to start out in tech? Probably one of the single most important skills like in terms of like financial outcome is interviewing well and negotiating well. I don't know how much people follow the news about like the job market for senior engineers, but people are jumping ship for other senior jobs and getting like 50 to 100% pay bumps. And in order to do that by staying at your current company, it would take years. And so getting really good at interviewing and like securing multiple offers and using those to leverage a better offer for yourself in terms of like financial growth can shave years off of like your development. It's really unfortunate that that's the case. I try not to make that the case at, at my company, but uh, at, at many companies, it's just like, it's a horrible grind to get to the next level. You can prove yourself as much as, as possible, or you can just like get really good at interviewing and just jump ship. This is not to say like, just, just job hop. There's a lot of value to staying at an existing job. But in the end, like if you're just optimizing for money, Interviewing is like incredibly important. It's, it's it's probably the single most important thing that you can do. Oliver has his very first informal telephone chat interview and is asking what sort of questions should I prepare for? Now, this ties in nicely to uh, this guide I found. You shared it recently, Mike, about all the different types of interviews. What you'd be looking at is the recruiter screen or the hiring manager screen. It tends to be pretty informal, basically like a get to know you. So prepare like a elevator pitch for your background, who you are, how you got started in tech, why you're interested in tech, what you're passionate about. And then I would also do a lot of research on the company. Make sure you know the company well, understand what they're doing. If you're not interested in it, pretend to be <laughs> like you have to kind of like you have to kind of convince them that you are also like what, what you're looking for in your next role. Like, you know, if you're if you're this is your first developer role, it might be pretty obvious, but you should be able to articulate that. And then trivia style questions. These are typically like weed out questions. Some of the more famous ones like for web development are like, what's the difference between get and post? Mm -hmm. When you hit the enter button in the URL uh, bar of your Chrome window, what happens? Like what are the next steps? Like that, those are like kind of some classic ones, like what's bind, call, and play? Like just kind of like dumb questions that like recruiters are trained to, to ask in order to just like figure out if this person like has any idea what they're talking about. So those are the three things I would prepare for. Sylvia has a question. A question that drives me crazy is what are your weaknesses? Should we really be honest with answering this? You should prepare for this question. <laughs> like people ask it a lot. Do not say things like I'm too much of a perfectionist. I work too hard. Like don't say anything like that. People call BS on that. The way that I always answer this is like, I do have weaknesses. I, I am honest about them. And I tell them how I'm working on them. Do not leave that <laughs> second part out. If you don't tell them how you're working on them, this question will be like a death trap. Like I bought a course on like how to address this or like I like talk to my mentor about this like every week. Just have like some kind of plan of action for how you deal with your weaknesses. Maybe for example, you could say, I think my public speaking 
the skills are not great, but I've hired a voice coach. Have you got any tips on how you can negotiate your salary as a junior specifically? The answer is it's complicated. The first offer that a company makes you is less than they're willing to pay, like almost always. They are expecting you to negotiate. As a junior, it makes it really complicated because like you're really just trying to get your first job. When I got my first job, I did not negotiate and they paid me minimum wage. Uh, mm -hmm. I made like $9 an hour. Uh, $18,000 a year. I left a lot of money on the table by not negotiating, but like maybe I, I'm not sure. Maybe that's all they're willing to pay for someone who like didn't have the skills that they were looking for, you know? So you should try. It's very rare for a company to just like yank an offer because you asked for more money. And if they did that, they're probably very toxic. Yeah. If you ask for something outrageous, then you can expect to, them to yank your offer. If they come in with like $60,000 US and you ask for like 110, um, they don't, don't be surprised that they yank your offer. But I would say like generally do your market research, um, understand like what other juniors are being paid in kind of the industry and the ge geographic location. Uh, and if it's like remote, you know, try to get, try to get some of that data and use that to, uh, like you're, you're probably not going to have a lot of competing offers to, to leverage, but I would at least give it a shot. My second job I knew to negotiate and I actually didn't have any leverage and I just asked for more money and they gave me a little bit more money. Like, and I'm, I'm actually always surprised that they did that. I think they just wanted to like end the conversation. I was so incompetent at, at negotiating back then. In conclusion, do it, ask for more money. Don't be outrageous. What would you say makes a good junior? Generally, the way that most like big companies think about the progression from junior to senior is like the scope of the project that you can take on and the level of autonomy that you have. Like those and like and also like a third one is like the impact, which is the impact that you have on the company, which is like, you know, kind of like an output metric of, of those two things. So you want to like get in a position where like you ask fewer questions. But at the beginning, you want to ask tons of questions and you want to ask good questions. Someone who asks thoughtful questions is going to be successful if they come in they're like oh this is this is uh this is a question like i've been stuck on this for like you know an hour or so here's what i tried here's where i'm stuck here's the part that i'm like struggling to kind of think through and like getting advice on how to think that's really helpful for someone rather than just like asking for the answer oh like this is what i'm stuck on like what's the code that i can like paste into to get this working mm -hmm. understand the thought process that the senior is going through to uh, to arrive at that conclusion is really important. And like the way that you do that is by like presenting your question well, like providing all the context of like how you're thinking about this and like allowing the senior to correct any like misguided like thoughts that you you have about or misguided instincts about how you're solving this problem. And so like that is probably the single most important skill that I would advise people to cultivate is like how do you ask good questions and how do you show that you've been putting in the work before you ask? And then like in, in terms of like qualities, it's passion and humility, like that coachability and the drive to learn. Uh, those, those two things are going to take you really far. What do you wish you knew when you were starting out in tech? Um, I have a couple of pieces of advice here. Like one is, is definitely like the advocating for yourself piece. It took me a while to learn to do that. And the early career mistakes that you make compound. If you, Come in, you don't negotiate. I read some statistic and I may be like horribly misquoting it, but like I remember it was a staggering amount. Like if uh, if someone comes into tech and they like don't negotiate, they typically make like seven thousand dollars less than like their, their peers who do negotiate. And over the course of that career, it adds up to like two hundred fifty to like five hundred thousand hmm. uh, dollars because those you're compounding like mistakes that you've made. Like the the you're setting a baseline for your salary, and that lower baseline is going to affect you through the, the entire course of your career. Um, so mm -hmm. definitely like come in advocating for yourself, learn, learn how to interview well. And then the other piece is like what I talked about, like in terms of why I left um, the big tech, just like keeping a pulse on like who you're becoming. <laughs> uh, and like people don't talk mm -hmm. about this very often is like I got into tech for a very specific reason. Like I, I actually didn't get into it for the money. Like I actually didn't know it was, was going to be this lucrative. I was really inspired by this story of a open source project called Yushihidi. And they were used to map out like pockets of violence in the Kenyan election. It later on became a way to map out like Haiti earthquake stuff and like uh, Hurricane Sandy and things like that. Like it, it's been used in a lot of different ways. Uh, and I was like, tech can do that. Like it's like such a cool thing that like tech can like impact people all over the world. It's like scalable. Uh, I thought it was amazing and magical. And like throughout the course of my career, I kind of lost sight of that. That's like, that's why I got into tech is like, I wanted to, uh, to make a difference in the world. And um, I would say like, don't worry about this too much earlier in your career, but like, remember to come back to it. Like, and I, I think like I waited a little bit too long and like, I, I got a little too, bit too burnt out and like, I kind of wish I'd done it earlier, but like, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I'm like, I'm glad I, I'm glad I stuck around at like the, the, 
like I learned what I learned needed to learn from the big tech companies. But um, just like check in with yourself. There's so many things you can do in tech. You can become an entrepreneur. You can become a freelancer. You can stay at a big tech company. You can like stay like at an IC level. You can become a manager. You know, there's so many different ways that you can go. Uh, t check in with yourself and like make sure that you know what you want to do. In your work. That's it for our top eight tips from Mike Chen. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more Ask an Expert live streams and top tip videos like these. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.